Hello, international bears. Welcome to a special podcast, Global Den Diaries. Your friendly guide to navigating live at Missouri State University. Yes, indeed. So we are here to make sure that your transition to the U.S. life and culture is as smooth and enjoyable as possible. So think of us as your first friends on campus, aside from your glam mentor. And today we are excited to have a new guest with us. Uh, she is a glam mentor. I'll allow her to introduce herself to you. Hello, everyone. My name is Precious Sasogo and I am a GLAM mentor and I'm also a graduate assistant with the international programs so if you have any questions about settling into the US please feel free to reach out to me or if you just have any questions about settling into Springfield or if you're having any challenges please don't be scared to reach out to us <laughs> thank yeah. you guys we are very nice people definitely <laughs> okay mm -hmm. my name is Christabel Carl Ante and I am a graduate assistant at international programs nice and I'm Kadesh Jonathan Cloud and one of the administrative assistants at the international services office and so throughout this podcast series we're aiming to provide information from academics to social life or even managing homesickness yeah and yeah. so in today's episode we will be talking <laughs> about US cultural basics mm -hmm. so we'll be talking about things like like time um, orientation, space orientation, communication norms, um, professor to students relationship, and restaurant etiquettes in general. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So let's jump in. What's the first thing we're looking at today? So that would be time orientation. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So thinking about time for me, I, I run on Caribbean time sometimes. <laughs> and African time. So. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but when you're coming for school in the US, everything is like strict on time. So mm -hmm. they say a time, they mean it. And in most cases, you arrive like five minutes early or 15 minutes early to prepare for whatever you're doing mm -hmm. at that time. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know? Mm -hmm. But what mm -hmm. you guys? Well, I honestly believe that the time orientation is something that I think you need to prepare yourself for because a lot of things in the US are very time based. Mm. Yeah. And if you can you can book an appointment with your doctor and I mean it could disrupt the entire flow of your process just because you're not respectful of your time. Yeah. I feel like also making sure that you stick the time shows that you respect whoever it is that you're meeting with. So if you have an appointment with say a professor it makes sense for you to get there early just to show them that you are very interested mm -hmm. and very um, conscious of their time yeah so, yeah that's right definitely especially like when you have appointments as you mentioned mm -hmm. in some mm -hmm. cases you have to reach like 15 minutes 15 before because there's like a yeah. whole check-in process mm -hmm. you know so i guess again being um punctual and of course respecting person time mm -hmm. nice uh what else is on our list space orientation <gasps> oh that's a very funny topic <laughs> I feel like we're not respecting I know, right? our, no, our personal bubbles right now. <laughs> but yeah, yeah the that things is we true. do for us. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so space orientation mm -hmm. basically means that when you're talking to someone, you make sure that you are at arm's length with mm. the person. So keep the space. Um, it is rude to be talking to someone and they're just being in their face. I hope you get oh, what yeah. I mean. Yeah, like, people like to, people yeah. like their personal space. So mm -hmm. make sure that I. You're always at arm's length um, with whoever you're speaking with. Mm. Yeah, and I think it's so important because in, in some cultures, it's, you know, we come up so close. Oh, you're going, uh, yeah. you know, something like that. <laughs> and like, like, and it's just my grandparents, they're like, they always come up in you and they want to talk to you. <laughs> like, you know, like, but, you know, it's so important to understand a uh, person's might, might feel comfortable when you yeah. show up on them. Yeah. And so keeping that arm's length and, you know, engaging, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. Um, mm -hmm. you know, helps you to be a bit more respectful of a person's personal space. Yeah. 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 And also we would like to talk about classroom um, etiquette. Mm. So mm. usually during the first week of class or first day of class, people have unassigned seats. Mm. So you come in early, you have a seat. People tend to sit in the same seats as your first day in class. So it is considered rude if you, you know, go sit in someone else's unassigned seat. Yeah. I don't think you what I mean. <laughs> yes. Because I mean, it, it just shows that you know you are respectful of other people's space people just tend to you know sit in the same spot from the first day so just note that as well so make sure you come early and then choose your space um in the classrooms so the unofficial unofficial on <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh. Yeah. i also think that the unofficial unassigned seats kind of like also helps your professors remember 
who uh, you are oh. yeah. and your contributions to class. That's so true. a lot of times they might not remember your specific names, but then they know where you sit and yeah. they definitely take notes. So when you walk up to them outside the classroom, they definitely recognize you because they've seen you in a particular spot mm -hmm. all the all time. time. So, yeah, yeah, that is true. That is true. Yep. Yeah. Well, I mean, like, what if I'm running late? Like, I'm late to class and I just happen to take the closest seat to me. Okay? Sit at the back. <laughs> <laughs> Do not disrupt the class. Yeah, sit at the back. Don't disrupt the class. <laughs> yeah. Nice. What's next on our list today? Ooh, communication norms. So, the US is a low context communication society. And what mm. that generally means is that write everything down. If you have a verbal agreement with a person, it's more difficult to prove. So I would recommend that it's better for you to send an email if you have an agreement, if, you, if you're trying to um, get clarity on a specific information, it just makes sense for you to have it written down. Just for posterity's sake, for you to kind of like have like some, some sort of unofficial like agreement. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, so yeah. And what I also like to add is that you make sure that if you're sending anyone a message or email, you include details. So don't just send yeah. a message and say, oh, hi, my name is Chris Bowen, and that is it. You expect the person to mm -hmm. come provide context. and provide context. Yeah. What do you want? No. Make sure that, oh, hi, my name is Chris Um, I need probably um, some clarity on this information then you provide every detail so that person responds one time and then everybody is sorted yeah yeah i think too in some cases like with professors they tell you how they would like you to, to, to respond you know mm -hmm. um again some of them might be as uh, as very strict with it yeah uh, but of course ensuring that you include the details including who you are mm -hmm. and in most cases helping um include your m number helps a great deal yes. because yes. a lot of what mm -hmm. you do as a student is mm -hmm. attached to your student's mm -hmm. account mm -hmm. so you know communicating in that way yeah and again another thing that this also kind of points to is email etiquette so i feel like a lot of people like they write their emails the way that it comes to their minds <laughs> and i honestly would not recommend that i would say you should take time and create like a structure of some sort make yes. sure you have a subject that speaks to the specific topic that you're yeah. trying to reach the person on and like my colleague said include your m number your m number is like your identification number and it kind of like just gives whoever it is the school official that you're emailing like a heads up on who you are and watch uh, and how they can possibly help you so yeah um email etiquette is definitely important <laughs> i receive a lot of emails and it, a lot of them are very interesting <laughs> <laughs> yeah okay so we'll move on from that uh we will be talking about professor student relationship what do you guys think Ooh, mm. i feel like the far <laughs> distance in the u.s kind of shocked me a bit me too <laughs> it shocked me to my core because i mean i was coming from africa where i mean we had great professors and you know helpful professors but I didn't think that my professors could be this accessible to me. I didn't oh, yeah. think that they would care about like specific issues that I was having about specific questions. Yeah. You know, you just think that they just want to kind of like give you like a general overview. Yeah. But mm -hmm. I mean, um, so just like I said, the power distance is very um, short. And what that generally means is that um, you shouldn't be scared of like a school official. You should approach them as you would approach any other person with respect and with decorum and mm -hmm. just basically um, speak to them the way that you'd like to be spoken to. Oh, yeah. 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 Enough information, highlight, obviously articulate your issues ahead of time before you approach them. But do, I don't think you should be worried about like how they would respond to you I, I i have yet to come across a professor who was aggressive because i reached out on an mm. issue i was having so yeah yeah and i think one thing i also like to say concerning that is that um most professors in the u.s do encourage feedback um so it's very important that if you don't understand anything in class you reach out to send an email if they prefer emails that mm -hmm. is if they prefer calls um you give them a call and then say that okay i did not understand this in class i did not 
do this in class. Maybe he did something that you did not like. Mm -hmm. um, there's, they, they always encourage feedback. If mm -hmm. um, they are not audible enough in class, you could mm -hmm. always tell them that, oh, I couldn't hear you. I couldn't hear what you said in class. Um, maybe next time, uh, could you amplify your voice? I mean, they are very receptive um, towards um, feedback. feedback. So yeah. um, it is very important. Don't, feel, don't be scared. Just say it in a nice and respectful manner. Yeah. I think also there's a very collaborative nature of mm -hmm. when I guess interacting with our professors yeah. because I come from, from an academic system where you know you're in class you sit here and the teacher sits there yeah and it's, <laughs> it's very strict you yeah. know you only raise your hand if you had a question type of thing mm -hmm. but I feel it's like it's very collaborative they see you more as colleagues sometimes especially mm -hmm. at, at uh, it's not a very strict environment yeah. where you sit here mm -hmm. and the teacher sits here and you, you know you, you can't really ask questions mm -hmm. um, and in most cases at the graduate level they see you more as colleagues yes. so it's more of an interaction yes. or oh, let me hear your perspective mm -hmm. or oh, I didn't realize that you know mm -hmm. and still being able to communicate to help you uh, I guess build that relationship with your professors because especially if they're experts in their field as I believe they are in most cases mm -hmm. uh, they would be the ones to help you navigate that next step and yeah. so you know by being a bit more collaborative or sharing perspectives or different mm -hmm. ideas, yeah. it helps you to build that connection and relationship sure. on a professional level. level. <laughs> yes. Okay, so we'd like to quickly move on from that topic. Mm -hmm. uh, we will be talking about restaurant etiquette and shopping. Oh boy! <laughs> <laughs> I was so shocked when I realized that, you know, taxes are not added to the total oh, yeah. cost. You would not know. You would <laughs> make sure that anytime you purchase something online or in store, um, you put money aside for taxes. What you see on the shelf or online, it's not tax included. I, <laughs> I was so shocked when I found out. So yeah, keep that in mind. Oh, well, honestly, the sales tax was not my issue. <laughs> when it came, I mean, in my country, I feel like we had sales tax. I mean, it was like a flat rate that you yeah. could um, anticipate. So, yeah, I think what kind of like um, threw me off a bit was the tipping culture in mm. the US. Mm. Yes. I mean, back home, you would <laughs> tip, but then it was based on the service that you've been like rendered and it was voluntary. It wasn't like you were mandated to. Oh, yeah. Um, I feel like the TV culture here kind of like threw me off a bit because I mean it was like mandatory regardless of the the kind of service that you got and yeah. that was very interesting <laughs> for me. Yeah, it was very interesting. So yeah. Yeah, so I, I think you are kind of allowed to pay between 15 and 20 percent of your bill. Um, as a tip, mm -hmm. so you have to keep that in mind as but well. I, I, think I mean, it's not mandatory, but oh, yeah. if you want to, yeah, between 15 and then 20% of your total bill. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think a huge part of or well, the reason for that is the fact that um, the way that they, they are paid minimum wage. Yeah. So all the servers make their salaries mm -hmm. off of tips. Mm -hmm. So I guess that's it, in most cases why tipping is such a big thing in the US, mm -hmm. yeah. you know? And it's it's separate from the, the sales tax that you're gonna get. Yeah. <laughs> I mean it. talking about tipping, I know most tips happen in restaurants. Mm -hmm. So if you go into a restaurant to eat or dine with friends, um, make sure that you do not snap your fingers to call a waiter. Oh <laughs> yeah. It will come to you. Yes. It is it is considered rude if you do that. So just keep that in mind as well. Yeah, I agree. I agree. And you don't have to yell across the room as well. Waiter! <laughs> I, feel like, I feel like they're generally very attentive. All you need to do is like make eye contact with them and then you could maybe do like a small wave. Yeah. 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 And they usually check in like every five, every ten, five minutes. to ten minutes. Yes. So yeah. that's yeah. the opportunity for yeah. you to request the things that yeah. you're really wanting, mm -hmm. you know? Mm -hmm. Nice. What else are we talking about today? I feel like we're on a roller right now. Oh, okay, okay, okay. So we've been talking about homesickness since the beginning of this podcast. Um, Kadesh, what do you think uh, students can do to deal with homesickness? I think we, we only experience homesickness because we're so far away from home mm -hmm. and we don't have that same sense of community or those same friends or those same interactions. Mm -hmm. So a huge thing about uh, conquering that when you're in a different country is building that sense of community mm -hmm. and here at Missouri State we have like over 100 student organizations mm, uh, yeah. different groups um, mm -hmm. and we are currently we're in the Midwest or so in the Bible Belt yeah so there's a lot of different uh, religious groups around that you know provide um, activities for engagement and stuff like that mm -hmm. so I mean a huge part of 
conquering homesickness is building your community. Sure. You know, there is like the West African Student Association. The South Asia Students Association, you know. Asian Students Association. I mean, even the with- mentors. Oh yes, the glam mentors. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, we do have professional associations as well. This is why like you, you join them to build connections, mm -hmm. to make friends, long life friends, honestly. So, I mean, I think it's one way to deal with it, with homesickness, I mean. Definitely, I think also to, um, because we're in a college town and there's 20 international persons, yep. there is different like um, like like the Latino market or the yep. African, African market. market. So you get to buy some of these similar ingredients that mm -hmm. you would in your home country mm -hmm. yeah. to make these same kind of dishes. Yeah. So I think that too helps you cope with homesickness, being able to taste the familiar meals mm -hmm. and True. You, know, you know congregate with friends. Mm -hmm. And you know I think that's a great way to kind of combat. That, ex yeah. that ex experience of homesickness. Yes, and we are really excited to have you join us um, at Missouri State University. We have students from all over the country, so you will definitely meet someone from your country here <laughs> to make you feel at home if that is what you're worried about, so yeah. Nice, what about you, Precious? What are some things you've done to kind of overcome feeling mm. homesick? Well, I feel like one of the first few things I did was I attended the International Day I think that oh, happened yeah. Yeah. after orientation and I feel like a lot of these um, communities that you just spoke about they would definitely be at the international mm -hmm. day and they kind of like pitch about and tell you what their mission and their vision is mm -hmm. and then you can decide if it's kind of like your jam and then you can maybe join them and you know I feel like that was really helpful uh -huh. in helping me kind of like identify like the groups that I was interested in and mm -hmm. yeah Yes, and I think that in most of these associations um, would be at um, the NISO, mm -hmm. the New International Students Orientation. They will have like a tabling um, session. So please, uh, when they approach you, I hope you are very open to, you know, joining most of these associations. It, it will help you. And I think one more thing to add is that they, they, they're not only a sense of community in most cases. Mm -hmm. They could be a means of like an internship or gaining uh, experience, yeah. building, um, I guess, like knowledge in your field or being able to have uh, industry experience. Mm -hmm. So like we have some professional organizations yeah. like yes. the uh, student, the Graduate Student Association Stations. and the yeah. Association of, of, of Graduate Students and stuff like that. And the Project and Management the Students Association. You know, so they allow you to still build experience while finding that sense yeah. of community. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. I think we also have something called the Women in Business. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And it's attached to the College of Business. And yeah, I think it's a valuable organization to um, explore as well. So yeah. Okay. Definitely. I think we're done for today. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like we've covered a lot of great topics, mm -hmm. you know. But again, of course, through all this series, it's our aim to provide you with as much information, a little tidbits to help you navigate the experience of moving to the U.S. Because in most cases, we're moving from thousands and thousands of miles away. Mm -hmm. You know, you guys, where are you moving from, Precious? Ooh, I moved from Nigeria. <laughs> uh, they kind of like took me two days to get here. It shouldn't have. It shouldn't have. It shouldn't have, but it did. Well. <laughs> you know, so anything that we can do to help make the experience um, enjoyable or smooth in getting here and, and being here mm -hmm. is what we aim to do. Yes. yes. So if you have any questions, please feel free to reach out to us at international services at Missouri State.edu. And please follow us on Instagram at Mose Global. <laughs> Until next time. Bye. bye.